Okay, so now we're going to uh, continue with probability. We're going to talk about games um, for a second. Normally, this time of year, we would be preparing for our Carnival Games project. It's going to be a little different this, this year for obvious reasons. But anyway, we're going to talk about games. And we're going to talk about a shortcut. So, okay, let's say you're doing like um, a ring toss. And this could be anything. Um, we're just looking for something that has two possibilities, right? Like hit or miss. Or if you're making baskets, like making the basket, not making the basket. But So we're going to say ring toss. Or it could be a coin flip, whatever. You've got two options. So this is you. You're standing here. You've, you're tossing your little ring. Here's your ring. So we're going to toss it. You can either hit it or you can miss it, right? And let's say there's a 50-50 chance. And then on, so that's your first, that's your first throw. On your second throw, it doesn't depend on the first. You get another two options. You could hit the second throw, like you could make it onto the little bottle or whatever, or you could miss it. Or if you missed it the first time, on the second time, you could hit it or miss it, right? So it's basically it's two options. If we go to the third round, um, same thing. You could hit it, you could miss it. You could get a hit or a miss, hit or a miss, all the way down like that. So now... If we go through and we want to know, well, what's the what's the probability that we, like out of these three tosses, what's the probability that we had two hits? Probability of two hits. Okay. Question mark, because that's what we're trying to find, right? Okay, so there are several ways we could do that. So, and we're going to say only two hits, not three, but only two. So that would be, this one would be an option. This one would be an option. And this one would be an option, and pretty much that's our only option, right? Because everything else has either three hits or it has, like, two or three of the misses. So those are our only three. So there are three possible of those. So our probability would be three out of, in this case, there are eight total. So it would be three out of eight. Okay. Well, that was a little bit complicated. We had to, like, draw the tree and we had to go through and we had to count or we had to list out like H H H H H M H M H H M M like that's a lot of work. Okay. So there was this guy. It's not that kind of story. Okay, so there was this guy way back in France in like the sixteen hundreds, and his name was Blaise Pascal. This guy was famous for a lot of things. But one of the things that he did was he came up with this geometric pattern. And they call it Pascal's triangle, and you know this is specific for for probability. So let me put this Pascal's triangle. Woohoo! I'm sure you've heard the name. He did all kind of other stuff too. Like he did, he was a mathematician, a physicist, a philosopher, an inventor, a writer. Like he did all this stuff. But anyway, but way back in the 1600s. So okay, so we're looking at Pascal's triangle, and this is kind of an interesting thing. And I decided to include it this year because it's kind of interesting. It's kind of a neat way of figuring things out without having to draw a bunch of tree diagrams. Okay, so this is going to be a little weird. So, okay, this is your starting point. I'm going to put a 1. The next row, I'm going to put a 1 right here. I'm making a triangle, so I'm going to put another run. The next row, so every row starts and ends with a 1. And then the stuff in the middle... What you're going to do is you're going to add up the 2 above it. So 1 plus 1 is 2, so I'm going to put a 2 here and then a 1 on the outside. So the next row, I'm going to put a 1. Let me change colors here so we can see the different rows. I'm going to add these two. That gives me a 3. I'm going to add these two. That gives me a 3. And then I'm going to have my 1 outside. And then I'm going to do that again. I have a 1. I'm going to add the next two. That gives me a 4. I'm going to add these two. That gives me a 6. Because 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. And I'm going to put my 1 on the outside. I'm going to do one more row. So I'm going to start with a 1. I'm going to add these two. So 1 plus 4 is 5. 4 plus 6 is 10. 6 plus 4 is 10. 4 plus 1 is 5. And I have a 1 on the outside. And at this point, you're like, 
Uh, wow, yeah, that's cool. That's great. Okay. Okay. This looks weird, but it's actually going to give us probability. It doesn't, it just looks like a weird triangle, but it's actually, it really is. Okay. So this is my starting row. Let me put this a different color. I like all the colors because it keeps everything kind of straight in my head. Okay. Start. And let's say this was the ring toss, right? This is the first round of toss. It sounded weird. Okay, so this is the second try. This is our third try. This is our fourth try. This is our fifth try. Okay, on our first try, if we add across the rows, so we're going to add up this way. Okay, I'm going to take that out because I don't want to do that. Okay, 1 plus 1 is 2. So our total possible outcomes, I know, okay, total possible is 2. If I add across this way on our next row, 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 1 is 4, so our total possible outcomes will be 4. If I add across this next row, 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 3 is 7, plus 1 is 8. I add across the next row, I get 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 6 is 11, plus 4 is 15, 16. And if I add across the last row, if I add those up, 10 plus 10 is 20, 25, 30, 31, 32. 32. Those are my possible outcomes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these individual numbers in here. And let me get rid of this stuff in the middle. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to look at this um, as hit or miss, right? Or you're making the toss or you're not making the toss. So if I, if I want to know the probability of these different things, I can read it off of the line. So this is weird. So if I start from zero zero hits and going up then I would pick this out of out of out of this triangle I know it sounds weird let me show you so let's say on the prob on the second toss on the second toss I want to know so the second I want to know what's the probability of making one or at least one hit right or not at least, just making one hit. Okay, well, so if I look in the second line, so this is the probability of zero hits. This is the probability of one hit. This is the probability of two hits. So probability of one, I just picked that off. That's two. And it's over my total possible, so it's two over four. So that's one half, right? Okay. Let's say I'm in the fifth try. And let's say I want to know on the fifth try, I want to know the probability of making three. Okay, well, if I start from zero, this is my zero, one, two, three, four, five. So the probability of missing all of them would be one out of 32, right? Probability of making all of them would be one out of 32. But if I look and I read this across, I want probability of making three, that would be this one, right? So the probability of making three hits would be 10 out of 32. Is your mind blown? It should be. This is pretty amazing. So basically, you just if you wanted to, rather than set up the whole big tree diagram like we did before, you can set up this blase, I mean this uh, Pascal's triangle and then just read across.